Welcome to the DevOps Library. We're glad you found yourself here. This is Samantha, and in this short but extremely detailed lesson, we're going to set up Jenkins from scratch. <laughs> if you don't know what Jenkins is, please feel free to watch our introduction video or visit Jenkins.io. While this video is relatively easy, some of the commands are fairly long, so feel free to copy and paste from our summary if you don't want to type them by hand. Okay, you've been warned. Let's go ahead and get started. First, spin up a fresh Ubuntu 14.04 server. Once you've logged in, first make sure you run sudo -i to become root. Next, we need to add the Jenkins key to apt-get, so go ahead and run wget -q -o -http colon slash slash pkg dot Jenkins dash ci dot org slash debian slash jenkins dash ci dot org dot key pipe apt dash key add dash wow <laughs> all right now we need to add an entry to our sources list so go ahead and run echo deb http colon slash slash pkg dot jenkins dash ci dot org slash debian binary slash pipe t dash a slash etsy slash apt slash sources dot list Oh my gosh, that was rough. Okay, we're almost ready to install Jenkins now. But first, let's install Java JDK 8. By default, if Java isn't already installed, the Jenkins installer will add JDK 7. And while you can certainly do that, CloudBees recommends using Java 8 because it does have substantial performance and stability improvements over Java 7. So let's go ahead and add the Java 8 repository first. Go ahead and run add apt dash repository ppa colon webupd8 team slash java dash y next run apt-get update then once that finishes type apt dash get install oracle dash java 8 dash installer dash y Perfect! Great job so far! It will take a little while for Java to install, and because we're using the Java 8 distribution from Oracle, we will need to accept a license agreement before the setup completes. If you'd rather use OpenJDK, it works just as well. Alright, now we're finally ready to install Jenkins. So go ahead and type apt-get install Jenkins-y. Okay, great! That's it! Now it shouldn't take too long to finish. And once it completes, we'll be able to connect to the Jenkins Web UI on port 8080. All right, let's go ahead and try that now. Just go ahead and open up a web browser and type in the IP or host name of your Jenkins server, followed by colon 8080. All right, there we go. Great job. We're now ready to go for the rest of the course. As a final note, if you'd like to reach Jenkins on the standard HTTP port 80 instead of needing to type 8080 every time, we can easily do so using IP tables. Be warned, the line is relatively long, but it will make it much easier for your users to remember the Jenkins URL. So go ahead and run IP tables dash A prerouting dash T NAT dash I F zero dash P TCP dash dash D port 80 dash j redirect dash dash to dash port 8080. All right then, that command will automatically forward any TCP packets coming into our server on port 80 to our internal port 8080, which means we can now access the Jenkins web interface without specifying the port. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's run one final command. Type apt dash get install IP tables dash persistent dash Y. Once the installation completes, 
tell it to save our current IP tables. That way, when we do restart, we won't lose our IP table settings. Well, that's it for this lesson, and that was a lot. Thanks for sticking with it. You did a great job. As always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again really soon.